as you can see, you can probably tell um, that this is a lot more high res, so to speak, than my previous episodes. Why? I now have a team. Why? Apparently I'm special. No, I'm joking. I'm uh, moving up in the world. And uh, I'll address the fact that I didn't do the podcast last week. I'll address that. But we'll get to that, okay? Stop jumping down my neck. We will get to it. What I will say is, welcome. There's a beautiful boy behind the camera currently watching me, <laughs> being beautiful. And uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's just get on with the episode, shall we? Shall we? No, let's address, actually. Let's address why I didn't... Um, post no let's get on with the episode because that's actually part of that's part of the episode itself all right here we go <laughs> you are listening to in ayame we trust with me ayame the g toby you're fired the gal that you trust um this episode is available on spotify and apple Podcasts, and if you want to watch it visually you can do so on my youtube <laughs> Anyway, um, not much else to be said there. Let's get on with the pissing show. Tee hee. I don't like having two men. Here's the thing, actually. Let's actually let's actually talk about that. Not only are there two extra, usually when I do this podcast, I do it completely by myself, sat in this chair with a camera and this mic. And it's very private, it's very intimate. I have two men in my house. I have two fully grown men watching me do this podcast. Do you know how disgusting that is? Do you know how absolutely, I feel, I just feel, it just feels very gross. I feel like they're bringing their masculine energy. One's on an iPad. So there's an iPad kid right now in the corner of this room. It's disgusting. But I'm gonna try and keep it as feminine as possible. Um, maybe we should get some flowers or something to make it really pretty and, and neat. Yeah ambiance but today's episode is good <laughs> oh god I hate it I don't like it at all I actually don't like it you're throwing me right off I knew this would happen <laughs> he said I'm gonna hide in the corner yes man hide no I'm joking I'm kidding no I'm not gonna make you hide in the corner wow that felt very powerful feminine wow I feel like Oprah Winfrey what the hell today's episode is about losing your streak what do I mean by that well in reference to the fact that the last episode, which was supposed to be last week, I missed. I missed my streak of posting every day. No, every week, every Thursday. I didn't do that. And in addition to that, I missed my streak of going to the gym. I had a 17 week streak of going to the gym. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Thank you. He said I look great. Stop flirting. We're on camera. I had a 17 week streak of going to the gym and I missed about four weeks. Why? Because I was away. And for a moment, I thought to myself, I am a failure. I have lost it all. I've lost the streak, so what's the point? I've lost the streak. I've lost the momentum. The moment momentum is gone, sorry. The habit is gone. I'm no longer doing it. I'm currently looking at two cameras, so trying to... Anyway, the momentum and the streak is gone. And I had to really change my perspective from it being that I will never do this again because I've lost the streak, which I think a lot of people do. Like for example, they think that with going to the gym or doing something consistent, consistently, it requires consistent and constant motivation to do it. But recently, as of this uh, recent year, so to speak, I've changed it more so to looking at the bigger picture. When I say that, I mean, we, we tell ourselves, sorry, that we have to be present. We have to be so present and be present in the moment, be present in the day, be present in this. So when you do fall off, say for example, you're going to the gym like I was, going to the gym regularly. And then one week you miss the gym because you've got a busy schedule or you just weren't feeling it at all. Or say for example, you were on a reading streak, you were reading a certain amount of books, you had a goal to read a certain amount of books and then one book just really threw you out of it because you didn't enjoy it and then you just weren't in the mood to read or again, you were busy. And because we are so be present, be present, be present, you don't look at the bigger picture of, that's just a very small blip in what is your life. Like say for example, if I, and it all keys in with another thing that I'm gonna say. Say for example, if I um, had that blip at the gym and then decided, well, I just don't go to the gym now anymore, do I? That's just who I am. And then I continue that notion and that, um, 
dialogue that I'm just not a gym, I'm not in the gym right now. I'm not in the gym right now because I'm out of my streak. I would convince myself that I'm not a regular active person and therefore don't go to the gym. But I didn't do that. I looked at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is that this is just a small blip. Say for example, you got your doctorate. Like say for example, you studied, you got your doctorate. And then as you were being a doctor, you actually thought, do you know what, I'm gonna take a gap year. I'm gonna take a gap year and I'm gonna go to Thailand. That's where they all go. Would you still say you're not a doctor? No, because you have the ability to go back to it if you wish. <laughs> and that's where I was. Anyway, <laughs> life ebbs and flows. And that's why I was gone last week. Oh, do we want to know? No, sorry, why I was depressed? I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> things just happen, eh? M moments just happen. Feelings are not constant. And do you mind leaving your male cough out of this room? <laughs> Disgusting! <laughs> I hate it. God, I hate you guys. I hate your species. Should we talk about that next episode of why, why men are disgusting? Anyway, back to what I was saying. <laughs> I was saying, I was depressed because, I mean, I wasn't depressed. Well, I was, I was just stressed out. That's why I missed it. Yeah, so if you, everyone that was DMing me, where's the episode, where's the episode? I literally can't get out of bed right now, I'm so stressed. That's, that's why the episode is. The episode is in my head. And in fact, I don't really think about the episode until it comes out. Um. <laughs> what a kooky gal. Anyway, that has been that first segment. We're gonna move on to the questions now. The aunt, what? The agony aunt, ask Guillaume. Deary, what is going on? I've forgotten the whole segment. I forgot what it's called. I'm gonna burp, hold on. awful doing that with two people in the room it's actually less enjoyable i'll be quite honest it's less enjoyable but we're going to move on to the dear Yame section of this show where i'm going to ask some of your questions because there's not much else for me to talk about <laughs> let's go right i'm just going to pick a random one today because i can and also like with anything you know, none of this podcast has, has a theme. The, the, I mean, not theme, sorry. Not, this podcast is chaotic. The fact that I even have two people filming it right now and this whole setup, it doesn't make sense. But here we are. I guess we have to evolve. Dear Yame, I spelt your name correctly, so please don't shout at me. God, you're just disgusting. Anyway, <laughs> dear Yame, I spelt your name correctly, so please don't shout at me. Well done. Well, you, thank you. Do you want me to be thankful for the fact that you spelt my name correctly? Is that what you want from me? I love your pod and I find it so funny. Did you hear that? Did you hear what? <laughs> it's the highlight of my Thursday, even my week. <laughs> That's a real, that's genuinely what they said. That's a real submission. Oh, wow, too bad for you. 3.3 <laughs> <clears throat> 3 million. Anyway. <laughs> My agony is on the subject of clothing. You might be able to help with this actually, man. I'm a male who likes to wear male clothing. I'm currently in college and <laughs> unemployed. <laughs> so like masculine clothing, I'm assuming. Um, I'm currently in college and unemployed. Same. Hopefully that'll clear up some wonderings and ponderings you might have about me. So he's young and in college. Young, dumb and full of cum, as they say. <laughs> anyway, whenever I look at my clothes, oh, whenever I look at clothes that I like the look of, they're always so expensive. Sometimes I'll see things online and think, oh, they look really nice. I'll check them out. And then they're so expensive. Even the other day I was, okay, let me tell you right now. Let me tell you right now. Let me tell you right now. I'm pausing this agony right now. But if I'm going to finish this agony, there's no real question or the question itself is shite. You, my friend, are banned from this podcast. I don't care if it's a highlight of your week. If you waste my time like this. <clears throat> Even the other day, I was looking at some basic corduroy shorts, 59 
Why are we... <clears throat> I understand that some high brands charge a lot for clothes because they're a label and they can, but fifty nine ninety five for a pair of shorts, I struggle to comprehend. Right. My question that I pose to you is, how can I look good, wear ethical clothing, wearing things that I like the look of when everything is so expensive? If you answer this agony, thank you so much. You're lucky I'm answering it because it's an awful agony. What do you pissing mean? What do you pissing mean? <clears throat> what I will say, sweet baby angel, is basics. Just buy basics and make sure the basics are ethically sourced. A basic pair of pants and a basic tee. That's all you need as a man. You don't need to go crazy. Patterns are nice, yes. But for me, if I guess if you're a heterosexual man and you like to attract women, I'm a woman and I sometimes are attracted to men. I like a man in a basic. That's it. You need nothing more. And a clean pair of shoes. Make sure they're washed and ironed. And make sure you smell nice. Men that stink are the worst thing on this planet. Men are the worst thing on this planet. Men that stink, burn them all in a chamber. Yo, that's a good point. Yeah, no, don't burn them in the chamber together. Because in fact, don't burn them. That would really stink. That would really drown them. Drown them. Yeah, drown them. Um, <laughs> so that's what I would say to you, sweet child. Um, also, pick a better agony. What the hell did we just talk about there? Clothes? Clothes? Next one. <laughs> This one's gay. Okay, go. Dear Yami. <laughs> I love the gay ones. The gay ones are my favorite because I love the gays. Dear Yami. They, they've put fake names. So they're using fake names. Recently, my best friend Alice introduced me to her friend Sasha. During the party, Alice was egging me on to flirt with Sa Wait, are you gay or are you just a man? I don't know if you're gay or a man. I don't know what you are. Please ne let me know next time so I know if you're gay because then I'll skip it if you're not gay. Anyway, the <laughs> during the party, Alice, Alice was egging me on to flirt with Sasha and by the end of the night, Alice said, I'm not allowed to flirt with Sasha because Sasha is her friend and she doesn't... Right, you're pissing me off. I keep pick Maybe it's my fault because I keep picking rubbish ones. What the hell does this... Will you anyway. <clears throat> Alice said, I'm not allowed to flirt with Sasha because Sasha is her friend and she doesn't want me to date her. How do I go about this situation? What are your thoughts? Delete Alice from your life. She sounds like a weirdo. I don't know how long you were talking to Sasha for, for you to actually have like developed a connection, but delete Alice. She sounds strange. Get a grip as well. Are you gay? Are you gay? <laughs> That's, the <main> <laughs> That's the main question. I wanna know if you are a woman or maybe trans and talking to Sasha and planning to be lesbians. If not, if you're a man talking to Sasha and planning to be a heterosexual couple, I don't care. I don't give a hoot and heck. I only care about your gayness. Anyway, next one. <laughs> next one. <laughs> I don't like this. <clears throat> I need to pick a good one because these are all like recently have been shite. These have been terrible. <sighs> I've got one Asian. Love. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I've got one from an Asian. <laughs> Dear Yame, for starters, I love you. And I was heartbroken when I couldn't see you at the Edinburgh Fringe last year. Well, don't be, because I hated it. It was the worst experience of my life. No, it wasn't. It was fantastic. I'm glad I did it, but I'll never do it again. It was hell. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I've been dating this guy for over two months, close to three. And he hasn't asked to be in a relationship with me, even though he knows how much that means to me. Dump him. <laughs> Should we carry on? I guess we'll finish the, the agony, but I don't think we need to. Remove him from your life. We've practically spent more than a month together nonstop and we're exclusive. But I don't know why he wouldn't just be my boyfriend already. For details, he has told me before that he's dated someone for 11 months without being together. And I don't think I could do that. Boyfriend might just be a label, but it's a label I want for security. Good girl. I don't have a question. I just wanted to rant. What? Oh, gay. They're gay. He's gay. <laughs> He's gay. This one's gay. He said about me, I'm 23 year old, five foot six, unnecessary, Asian guy living in Edinburgh. He's gay. He's talking about this man. Um, 
remove that man from your life immediately. Remove that man from your life with immediate effect. You've been talking, regardless of how long you've been speaking for, regardless of how long he's spoken to other people previously and hasn't had the label of boyfriend, girlfriend, I don't give a hoot and heck. You have said that it's important to you. So if it's important to you, prioritize it and get rid of someone that does not align themselves with it. Capish? I'd say so. Thank you for your time. That's it. Like what the heck? And the thing is, here's the thing, because with my, wow, the birds are chirping. The parakeets, they're green. <laughs> I'll be <laughs> I'll be softer because the parakeets basically gave me a um a sign to be soft. With my ex We don't need to go into it. With my ex, we didn't actually have a date like that he said, Oh, can you be my girlfriend? And I said yes. I basically just said hi. <laughs> It's been long enough, you're my boyfriend now. Because we'd had the point, the conversation about exclusivity. To me, I feel like I'm getting hot. To me, if you confirm with each other that you're exclusive, what else is there? Sorry. If you both have confirmed that you like, I'm not pausing for your agreement, I'm pausing for effect. Great. If you both agree that you like each other, you want to continue to date, you want to continue to see each other, you see a future with each other, and then you both agree that you're not going to sleep, talk, kiss anyone else you're together that is your boyfriend sorry what else is there what else do they need to confirm this is why and i hate this whole thing that men do i hate men you guys are disgusting anyway i hate this whole thing that men do like i really need to get to know them no you don't that's what the the whole boyfriend girl, you're not gonna marry them you're not married off worst case you can break up if, it, if you don't like this person you can break up the, the whole dating stage is to decide whether they're crazy and whether they treat you nicely enough to then move them to the next stage what more do you need to know or what more are you going to learn after a month that that, that that month's not gonna teach you. You know that this person is a good person to you within that month. They treat you nicely. They take you out on dates and they pay. And <laughs> you know that you get on and you have a, a rapport with them. And now you know that you're exclusive. That is your man. Sorry. And if they deny it, they're mentally ill. They need therapy. I'm hot, I'm sweating. Anyway, <clears throat> next one. Also, keep being gay. Love it for you. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, oh, oh! These are all random, but I like the random ones. I feel like when it's random, I um throws me off. You know, throws everyone off. Now there's an everyone because you guys are here. Toby doesn't give a pissing heck. Toby's just like, is is the resolution okay? He doesn't care. Is this four K? Wow. Wow. I've only ever done a 1080p. <laughs> Have I? Yeah. It's too much um, gigabytes. Wow. <laughs> the birds. Okay. Dear Yame, I love your I love you and your podcast so much. I've been obsessed with it ever since I discovered it and I hope you keep going forever and ever until the end of time. <laughs> me proving that people love me. Now for, now for my agony, which is not so much an agony, but just something I need to talk through. Okay, if this is a terrible agony. <clears throat> I recently got engaged to my boyfriend of seven years. We were going back and forth on having a traditional wedding or eloping, eloping at the courthouse with our immediate families. He has a small family and I have a very big one. Oh God, this is triggering. This is so triggering. <clears throat> we are both financially responsible. But he has a little, no, he is a little more frugal than I am. Men usually are. He would probably prefer an elopement and my brain is saying that it's, smarter to, it's a smarter decision financially. But the little girl inside me thinks I do want the wedding with the bells and whistles. Yes. How can I justify spending close to over 30k for one day? 30k for one day, that, that shocked you? Broke. <laughs> How can I justify spending, yeah, have you seen an India wedding? Do you know they spend like 250, anyway, 30k for one day. I think he'd be happy to do whatever I want, but I just don't know if we'd be making the right decision by choosing to have a big ce celebration. Thanks babes, love you. Love you too. Um, either way, you're going to regret your decision. 
because everyone always says, every, whenever you make a decision, you always think, what if? So you kind of have to make the decision and be solid in it and be just, that's the decision I made, I did it. I could have done this, but I decided on this. As for me, not to talk about my previous relationship too much, but this is exactly a conversation that I had because I wanted a big wedding because I have a big family. I have quite a big family. I have like 20, 23 cousins. I have a lot of cousins compared to an ex that I had that had like three. Um, so for me, uh, I can't have a small intimate wedding because my cousins alone take up most small intimate venues. So I really wanted a big wedding. And the compromise was none. Sorry, because here's the thing. Here's the thing, I, another thing I hate about you men, you disgusting creatures, you're disgusting, you're disgusting creatures, you're disgusting, absolutely ill birds, bird poo and uh, insects. It literally on the floor, on the ground, you literally poo on the ground, you're literally dirt. It's another thing I hate about you guys. Um, what you guys fail to understand, you're all worried about this money, money, money. You fail to understand that women, girls, little girls, Feminine creatures, let's say, because it's not just girls. Feminine creatures are brought up prioritizing and dreaming about their wedding day, dreaming about the dress, dreaming about the caterer. We have movies catered to us. Hello? What's that movie? Bride Wars. Hello? 27 Dresses. Hello? Four Weddings and a Funeral. We have movies that are chick flicks. <laughs> chick flicks. <laughs> specifically to help us dream of our wedding. Our wedding day is one of the biggest events that we are told we are going to have in our life. Yes, we have other big events, but our dreams are literally surrounded by it. No, we surround our dreams. Anyway, so we want big weddings most of the time. Most of the time, it is usually a woman that wants a big one, a man that wants an intimate one. Unless you are Asian, then there's no way about it. You're having a big piss off wedding. Or African, Africans, Nigerian weddings are they usually a lot of people Toby you're the you're the token Nigerian in this room because yeah. you have to have a trad and you have to have an, another one me ally Sudanese as well that's also in Africa eight day wedding so like a trad and then a, a non-trad Normal, so it's fine. So tell this man, first of all, you waited seven years for your engagement. Whatever you wanna do is whatever's gonna happen. Sorry, you waited around seven years for your engagement. You stuck by this, this male for seven years and you think he's gonna let you have an intimate affair? No, you're about to celebrate your seven years and the other 70 years that you're about to have, inshallah. <laughs> so he can piss off, really and truly, thank you. Am I red? I feel red. Have you, did I, I feel like I didn't really answer that question. Did I answer that question? Have your big wedding. Have your big wedding. What he says does not matter. Sorry. The compromise is I'm marrying you. That's the compromise. We're happily, we're getting happily married. That is the compromise here. Moving house. Did I mention I'm moving house? So this episode and the next episode will be the last two episodes in this house. And this set, well, this sofa's coming with me. I've washed it. So it's definitely coming with me. But with this setup. It'll be the last time. How sad. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna burp again. <laughs> this is an old one, because they've mentioned LA and I'm no longer in LA. Dear Iame, one, you're a lovely person and I love listening to you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Two. I'm 30 years old and I've never been in a relationship. I've been on dates and I've experienced heartbreak. No, you haven't. For a while, I was in love with a very close friend and I tried to fight it off, but ended up needing lots of space from him in order to be able to function and get over everything and go back to being friends. It hasn't been the same since. I wasn't really keen on relationships before and after that experience. I'm sure I don't want to go through it again. I've also rarely seen a relationship that I'm envious of in my family or circle of friends. My sister's married, but he's low key misogynistic. <laughs> you know, the type of man who's very nice and lovely, but also condescending and has a very narrow view of women. I have never envied anyone's 
relationship and even though I don't necessarily want one sometimes I do but then I look at everything I can do as a single woman and feel like I'd be contrived in a relationship I've always felt like there was something wrong with me in that regard how is it possible to be 30 years of age and to have never been in a relationship I don't know I guess I'm asking for your advice or opinion on this whole matter what if I never have a partner thanks love you and they've said good luck in LA I needed it because LA was hell um Right. Now I'm gonna have to give you advice as someone who is, has been in a relationship. And I know people that are my age that never have. Yes. And I think personally, cause I've noticed it with my mum, I've noticed it with me. The older we get as women, there's more men hate coming. More Miss Andrew, just prepare for that. The more, the older we get as women, the more we realize that men are disgusting creatures heterosexual men specifically <laughs> because oh because we've also grown out of the age where we have been told as women that we need a man to survive we need a man to do this and get here and feel fulfilled we need to raise a family in order as a woman to feel fulfilled which is obviously not true because there are plenty of women that have never raised families and have decided to prioritize their career prioritize their hobbies and still live a lovely full life so the whole idea that you you being 30 and having never been in a relationship is abhorrent is 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 not it's fine um why because if you are able to make your life enjoyable, i.e. you love yourself, you know what you like, you take yourself to nice places, you look after yourself, you pay your bills. Then why would you, I mean, if, if someone can't then raise your life to the next level, there's no need for you to then bring them in. Do you know what I mean? Am I, am I making sense right now? I keep looking to these two cameras and I don't really know which one to look at. I'm gonna focus on this one. Thanks for pointing at it after I decided I'm gonna focus on that one. Back to why I hate men. They think they know everything. Um, no. So my advice to you as someone, and I don't know, but do you feel as though you're missing out as a 30 year old having never dated anyone because societally you feel as though you should be dating someone or do you feel as though you want to experience romantic love? Because it may be that you, you're just convincing yourself that this is the wrong thing because that's what people have told you and that's what the movies show. But you may, if you're if you're not like dead set on experiencing romantic love, then you're absolutely fine. I mean, it, it's a nice experience, but it's also hell. Experiencing romantic love is also, I mean, I don't understand how you've experienced heartbreak if you haven't been in a relationship. I mean, it's, it's a uh, grief. If you experience grief, it's the same kind of feeling. But I mean, it's very different heartbreak when you've been in a in a long-term relationship is like ripping your limbs off and then just crawling around on the floor um <laughs> me currently experiencing heartbreak no i'm fine i'm fine stop asking but um yeah no long story short you're absolutely fine um you're also 30s as well they always say, I mean, me having never touched my 30s, I'm still in my 27s and I hope I, I hope I reach my 30s as a minimum. But they always say that your 20s are for being young, dumb and full of cum and your 30s are for when you make the, the real decision. You should never really solidify or, or um, what's it called? Promise yourself to the person that you meet in your 20s because your 20s are for fun. To I've moved forward, so that camera might be out of frame, by the way. No. All right, fine. That's what I was saying anyway. Um, so your 30s are really your time for, for experiencing and, and establishing those relationships. So stop beating yourself up for just living life and enjoying it. If, you, if you're telling me that you enjoy your life, like you've said, wait, hold on. You've never seen a relationship that you're envious of. So you're, it's not like you're pining over other relationships. You're looking at other relationships thinking, oh, if only it were me. Or you're able to just have fun by yourself. Then you're fine. Stop thinking that the grass is greener or that you need something else to enjoy life when you're already enjoying life. Do you know what I mean? It's just silly. That is so dumb. You are so dumb. So enjoy your thirties. And if someone comes along, make sure that they are improving your life and not just sitting there stagnant. Cause what the heck? What the hoot and heck are we talking about? 
get out of my literally get out of my space even if you're not even looking after me in a nice way or even treating me nice or even giving me new experiences that are fun get out of my experience and just be confident in the fact that your life is going the way it needs to go <laughs> anyway <laughs> that has been this podcast episode i have been here hot sweating i am perspiring like a bitch i'm sweating like a pig in august i don't know why maybe i'm nervous because there's two men in here and as we know men are dangerous men are dangerous disgusting what have we learned today kids men are gross they're gross they're disgusting they're mean they have no compassion they are lazy they are boring um heterosexual men you gays are fantastic anyway <laughs> this has been you should be gay this has been <laughs> this has been my episode with my new setup there's a light here there's a light there crazy tech and i'll see you next week next thursday 4 p.m this this if you're listening to this now then it was yeah love you <laughs>